Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 Podcast. I am your host, Nishé from NishéSnow.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have my guest co-host on today again, Miss LaKay Umba. Welcome, Professor Umba. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Snow. Once again, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to have you back. You know, you guys, I was all alone and solo a couple of weeks ago, but hopefully you guys loved hearing from me and got some good productivity tips. Let's see, let me go into a few housekeeping items. For the show notes for this episode, you could go over to nishaysnow.com slash 155. Wow, what, what do you got there, like a little red cup? <laughs> I was I was just thinking, oh man, I should switch to a prettier cup. <laughs> but it was too late. I was already here. Don't worry about what's in my cup. <laughs> so yes, people, thejaysnow.com <laughs> slash one fifty five. And also, if you love this episode, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and rate me or us five stars. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give a thumbs up. But wherever you're listening, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. All right, so one other thing I just want to say is if you haven't already, please go over and purchase my Notion Travel Planner, folks. I just used it for New York. It was super helpful. You guys know I really love Notion. And if you do not know what Notion is, just head on over to nishaysnow.com slash Notion. I got a video. I got a free template that will help you out. But I love it, love it, love it. And so along with the free template, I'm starting to create other templates that people can purchase in order to organize different aspects of their life. One of them being a travel planner. So if you go over to dreamsplansideas.com, which is the storefront for Nishé Snow, you will see the travel planner. So definitely check that out if you are starting to fall in love with Notion like I am. Also, the Life Cleanse Journal. Got to mention that on the podcast. I re- recently went to Ipade, hopefully I'm saying that right, in order to do an event. And people purchased the physical book and the digital version of the Life Cleanse Journal. And just think of it as a guided journal that asks you very reflective questions in 10 different aspects of your life. And it gets you focused. I have pulled these from questions that I ask myself every year. And people are asking like, hey, Nishay, how do you do all the things? And it's because I take the time and think about like what I want to do in finance, what I want to do for creativity, how am I doing when it comes to family and friends, you know, all the different aspects that kind of like and I have been talking about so far this season. It's funny, before I even knew about the eight dimensions or 10 dimensions or 12 dimensions of wellness, when I look back at the chapters of that book, I was like, I feel like Lakay. I was like, before, you know, I was ahead of the curve. Wasn't that even before the podcast, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. I was already thinking like that. <laughs> May I also say for the listeners, if you haven't looked at this beautifully designed (laughs) notebook, I was like, Nishé, this is too pretty for me to even write in. It's beautifully designed. I I need to let you all know that because you all are creatives. This is not just your run of the mill, run to staples or whatever to grab a journal. This is beautifully designed and it has all the questions that you all need. I did end up writing in it. (laughs) Now I look back in it. It's a helpful guide, and actually, I should probably buy a new one because I got mine. What year was that, Nishay, when it first came out? Man, that was like five years ago. Right, so my life is completely different now, so I should probably re-cleanse my life with the Life Cleanse Journal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it makes a great gift. I created the digital version because some people like to use apps like GoodNotes 
in order to write things down. And some people like to print stuff out. And so the digital version just kind of allows more flexibility for people who don't want a physical book, but the physical book is available too. So definitely check that out. I practice what I preach. I really do use these questions to reflect and realign my life to make sure that I'm working towards my goals and intentions for whatever quarter I'm in or season of life I'm in, I should say. So check that out. Okay, so let's get into the episode. So, you know, we are going to talk about creative wellness today. One of the 10 dimensions of wellness that we said that we were going to talk about this season. And this one is near and dear to both LaKay and I because we are both very creative people. We like making stuff. We just like innovating. We like doing all the things. And so we're going to get into in, in a little bit what that is. And LaKay will kick us off just to give you a good definition as a base. And then we'll also talk about creativity in itself, why people think they are not creative versus crafty talk, some flow state stuff, how to increase creativity, all kind of good stuff. And kudos to LaKay because she really did the research for this Can't wait. episode. So a lot of love and research went into it. So I really do hope that it helps you in this next quarter. But before we get into that, look, we're just going to do just a little bit of a catch up since LeKay abandoned ship the last episode. I just want her to talk about what she's been up to. And I'm going to actually talk about what I've been up to, too. Just a quick little rundown. And hopefully that our wins or challenges will help you in whatever you're dealing with right now. So, Miss LeKay, what have you been up to the last several weeks? I have been up to my neck in boxes, packing and unpacking and moving. And it's been an interesting experience. I'm trying to keep things positive for the rest of 2022. (laughs) So (laughs) I will say it's been interesting. There have been some growth opportunities that I've learned from along this journey of releasing. Oh my goodness, the releasing. I had to throw away so many things and I have made a pact with myself to not bring anything else into my house that I do not need or love because I don't ever want to have to move this. I'm not going to cuss on your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I've been up to last weekend. I participated in a, in homecoming at Norfolk state university where I'm, where I teach a couple of classes, I participated because my daughter was in the parade and we had to be up at six 30 in the morning. And I marched the parade with her that day. I got seven miles in. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got like a What's ping on my watch. Like, look, Hey, I was like, okay. Look, I was like, yeah, take that. Shay. <laughs> we we are competitive on our Apple watch. It's funny. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I have not been slacking. I have been active, but I'm ready to get back to my creating a new routine that's going to be good for me and the family and all that. What have you been up to? Yeah, you know, as you were talking, I was kind of looking through some things because I was like, so what have I been up to? Well, so a lot of things cooking people. I will just name off a few I had the Ipade event, and I think I may have mentioned it on a solo episode, I think, or my newsletter, but it was, I felt like even though it was rainy that day and we didn't have a ton of people come through, I, it's, it was still a success. Like, I consider an event like that a success if two things happen. One, I make back the, <laughs> like, the fee you have to pay in order to do the event. And two, if you make some great connections. And I did. I made double. So that was great. So the fee plus some. And then I also met a lot of people. I had a lot of meaningful conversations with creators and some creators that I'll probably have on the podcast later. So to me, it gets back to that social wellness. It did scratch that itch of putting me out there and connecting 
me with other like minds. So I loved it so much. So they emailed and said they're doing a holiday event, market event. And so I will be at that event and that is in December. And I'm looking at my calendar now. It'll be December 3rd, Epod A Market from 12 to 5. So if you're in the DC area, definitely come through. Let's see what else I've been. Oh, what'd you say? How do you spell Epod A for people who are driving or something? Oh yeah, it's I, P as in Paul, A as in Apple, D as in dog, E as in elephant. And I'll make sure to have that in the show notes too. And it's such a cute little co-working space. It's black owned and it was created for women of color to have a space, safe space to gather and work. And yeah, it's really amazing. Um, Met the owner. She's absolutely amazing too. It'd be great to have her on the podcast. And let me mention this. She was like, yeah, you guys should have your event. (laughs) I need you to put like an applause sound effect in right there. Yeah. I've been working with Michelle, not working with you, I'm just trying to convince you to go ahead and do this. We're going to have an event. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to invite all the listeners and all your fans and it's going to be great. It's going to be excellent. And so I think it'll be great. I think the only tricky part about the location is the parking is kind of like crazy because of the location that it's in. And so it's really best for people to like Metro or Uber there. So I don't know if that would be a deterrent or not, but it's in the city. It's cute. I love it. I think it would be a great place. So stay tuned on that. Also, I just wanted to mention I did a article about moon productivity. (laughs) And I created some, which kind of gets into this episode, some stickers to go along with that. I created it on my silhouette, which is part of me being creative. So I'll talk about that a little later. But if you, if listeners go to nashaysnow.com slash moon, I talk about how you could use the phases of the moon for productivity. And I'm really proud of that blog post because I did a lot of research And I refer back to it as I'm continuing to learn how to do it. I feel like it's a good reference because it's useful to me. And hey, don't worry. I will be making you some moon stickers. That's all I wanted to know. Really, that's what I was waiting to hear. (laughs) And even though I said I was going to get into it later, I I just wanted to say one little thing. They're actually images from NASA. It's the actual moon. I would like to say how I'm enjoying how you combined your woo-woo side with your scientific geek side and you brought them them together in a beautiful marriage. (laughs) So I love it. I love it. And then on that front, I, so you guys know I love Notion and I think I mentioned that I'm trying to, I'm like revamping how I organize my kind of personal life and also my like side hustle life. And so I've been trying to clean up Notion and then just figure out like how I want to organize myself for the future. And one of the things I realized is I, when I brainstorm and brain dump, I like to do it on paper first. And then I like to then put it in a digital format. And so... I bought this planner because I was going to make a planner for myself. And one day I might do that. But I bought this planner by Pen and Pillar. And I love it. And I only use this planner for content and things that I should work on for nashaysnow.com or dreamsplansideas.com. That is the only thing. I don't mix life stuff in it. It sits at my desk all all the time. I don't take it anywhere. And what I do is I use this in order to figure out what I should focus on every week. And I just really like the structure of it. I feel like the only thing that is not ideal is that the Saturday and Sunday isn't big enough for me, like the lines, because that's when I do the bulk of the work. But I I got workarounds. But anyway, so far it's been working and anything that needs planning or 
or needs to be put into the calendar, I then put that into Notion and into my calendar. And so I've been doing this for about a month-ish. And so once I see a return in my investment and I kind of lock in my new flow of productivity, I will create a video on it so you guys see how I use Notion, Calendar 5, and a paper planner in order to do it. And you don't have to have this paper planner. I actually have a digital planner that I created that I could use too. Or you could use if you prefer a digital planner, dreamsplansideas.com. So, so far, so good. And God, okay, I'm getting a little long, sorry. Stained glass class, I just want to mention, I have been slacking. <laughs> I missed two classes and I hate that because that's a waste of money. Oh, and <laughs> Terrible. It's terrible. And when I signed up for the class, I knew that this quarter was going to be a little crazy, but I thought I would be able to make it work. But between my New York trip and a big event that I will talk about going on, it's just, I've missed the last two weeks of class, but that's okay because I'm not going to beat myself up. It's life. And sometimes you just have to pivot. And the last thing I'll mention is I recently sent out a newsletter about decluttering. (laughs) Dear LaClay, declutter your house and all the things in it. That's what it should have been called. I was so attacked. I felt so attacked. This newsletter, you guys, and if you want to see it, if you're not, subscribe to the newsletter, my newsletter, nishaysnow.com slash newsletter. But if you want me to forward this newsletter to you, just email me at hello at nishaysnow. Dot com and I will share it with you. But essentially, the declutter, I talk about household items, clothing, email, friends and family, subscriptions, and food, and how in all those different areas, you need to take a look at all of those things, purge what you don't need, and then figure out like your way forward in order to just start fresh and get rid of things that are not serving you. So okay. you, <laughs> you looked at my life. And you were like, let me write a newsletter according to all the things Lakay needs to do in the next six weeks, starting with decluttering your house so you can pack and then get rid of some of those <laughs> necessary things. And while you're at it, go ahead and clean out your email. I'm pretty sure that's what you did. You took all of our conversations, wrapped it up into a pretty little newsletter and sent it out to everybody <laughs> you know. And I just feel attacked. And I want your <laughs> listeners to know. <laughs> Listeners, please let her know she's not alone, okay? (laughs) She is not alone. I got a lot of clicks on that newsletter because I feel like people were like, how can I declutter? Click, 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 click. So hopefully those who read the newsletter, you're doing at least one of those items, you know, because it could feel overwhelming, but just do one a month, one a week, whatever feels good to you. Like, hey, it was not just for you. It was for all the people out there, for all the people. That's what you say. <laughs> when I opened, I saw my name in bright stars and sparkling letters. <laughs> this is what we're doing now in the shade, publicly airing my dirty laundry. <laughs> out in these streets. <laughs> So yeah, so that was a lot, but I will have links to all the things in the show notes that I mentioned, like from Ipade, the moon article and all that good stuff. <laughs> we are so keeping his bark in there. Okay, so that's what's been going on with Lakay and I. I'm going to... to announce my big announcement a little later because it plays into creative wellness. So, Lakay, let's talk about creative wellness. Like, what is creative wellness? Why should people care? Let us know. Like, what what is it about? Okay. So, we started a series where we're talking about all the different dimensions of wellness. So, the creative wellness is the idea that good health involves every aspect of your life, including how you express yourself. It's the idea that creativity is a part of you and you must take care of it to remain healthy. And yeah, that's just the overall definition of creative wellness. And I think this is, I was super excited about (laughs) this particular one because this is a section that I talk about a lot when I'm teaching. 
because a lot of times people are reluctant to call themselves creative. Now, professional artists, yes, we refer to ourselves as creatives, but a lot of the times people who are not working in the profession or who are new to it or who are doing anything else will say, oh, I'm so not creative. I'm going to leave that to you because you're the creative one. (laughs) And it really grinds my gears because (laughs) I want everybody to know that creativity is with within reach for you it just really depends on what you want to do what I want people to get out of this based on what you just said is number one if you're like I'm not creative we want you to stop that negative talk right now bottom line folks everyone is creative and if you are saying to yourself I'm not a creative person lies and deception you are a creative person everybody's creativity just kind of manifests itself in different ways. Not everybody is going to be a quote artist, right? Or a writer or however in your mind you have divine creativity. Creativity is just thinking differently, doing something that, what would you say, Lakay, like that forces you to think outside of the box and I don't know. I think I think some of the misconception has come from the traditional definition of creativity. So mm-hmm. the Oxford definition is the use of the imagination or original ideas, especially in the in the production of an artistic work. Mm-hmm. That to me is is baloney. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I feel like, and this is I mean, it's not something that I feel. This is actually what I what I was taught. A lot of people may remember that I went to school for fine arts. So when we're talking about creativity, we are told that it's a series. I mean, it's the process of, of solving problems. So I'll say that again. Creativity is the process of solving problems. Mm-hmm. So as an artist, we're solving the problem of how do I get this particular idea? How do I get people to understand the idea that I need to convey through mm-hmm. a certain medium? Mm-hmm. So if you are... I don't know. I can't think of another industry, but any industry that you're in, if you're involved in solving a problem, that is using creativity because that means you haven't done it a certain way before. You have tweaked it and you're applying it to a new situation. That's all creativity is. Hmm. Other part I have a problem with this Oxford definition is use of the imagination or original ideas. I take really big issue with that because... There are no original ideas left. You guys can fight me on that if you want. (laughs) Not a single one. Take something like 3D modeling. That's only become available to us in maybe the last 15 years. Probably the government's had it for 30 years. Who knows? (laughs) But it's only been available to us. So we're like, oh, 3D modeling, that's new. We can do this new thing. But really, 3D modeling is just the idea of creating sculptures, which has been done since the beginning of time. It's just a new medium. So for those of you who are thinking you have to come up with original ideas. It's not that because there's, there are no original ideas anymore. You're taking something and you're putting your own spin on it. Mm-hmm. Everybody can, like I, I teach photography or I taught photography, but I teach photography. So I would give an assignment to a group of 20 people to photograph something red. It's very specific. You are mm. photograph something red And I can give the camera settings and this, that, and the other. But everybody's going to do it their own way because you Mm. bring your own... What's the word I'm looking for, Nishay? Like your own own artistic expression? Well, not even even breaking it down beyond that. It's your Mm. own lived experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Right, because I might go out and take a photograph of, like, a dog playing with a red ball. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're in the city and you take a picture of a mural that you love the texture of and you capture like the reds in that mural. Mm -hmm. But depending on what we're exposed to and what we're drawn to, that red photo is going to look and feel very different for each person. Right. Yeah. So that's where you bring your creativity there. You have an idea. You don't try to be original. You just try to put your own spin on things. But what is your, how do you define creativity? What do you think of it? I don't know. I I think it's, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to verbalize. I just, I love how you said like it solves a problem. To me, creativity 
is, is that. It is figuring out, I guess I go back to that expression. It is figuring out how to do something in a unique way. Yeah, and and that can be... (laughs) And that can be in many different forms from the traditional, what we think, dancing, writing, sewing, crafting, drawing, gardening, you know, whatever it might be. But it also might be literally figuring out how to creatively solve a problem when you're trying to streamline processes and you creatively find a solution. So that's where creativity gets like tricky because it manifests itself. And I feel like I said that word a lot in this episode, but it manifests itself in so many different ways in so many different forms. And so we're all creative in a different and unique way And some of us are more traditional creative than others, but it doesn't mean you're not creative. And when I say traditional, because like when it comes like photographer, watercolor, writer or whatever, like sometimes when people think of creativity, they automatically go to that versus someone who is solving a problem. Like I mentioned, like process wise or how to decorate a home or where to put something, but you are still using that creative side of your brain. So where do you think the disconnect comes in? Why do you think people are so adamant about, I'm not creative, you're the creative one, I'm not creative at all? Does anybody ever say that to you? I get that all the time. I, yeah. I mean, even when it comes to my journal, because when I do journal about my day-to-day experiences, I choose to have a very (laughs) over-the-top journal. It has washi tape. It has hand lettering. Sometimes I make stickers for it. I paste pictures in it. I use special pens. It's a little over-the-top, but that's because that brings me joy, and that is how I choose to express my creativity in journaling form. But then I've gotten people who are like, oh, I can't do that. That's too much work. I'm not that creative. I can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can. You are creative. It's not going to look like mine because we're not the same. We don't process things the same. We don't, you know what I'm saying? Like we're different. But if what I try to get them to see is if they start journaling and they do their own thing and not compare it to other people like me and they go back and they look at three months worth of journaling pages, they'd be kind of surprised that it is creative. They have decided to express themselves in their own way and that is creativity. So here's my theory, Nache, on the reason why people will come and tell you, or specifically us, that they're not creative. I think that it's a fear of judgment and a fear of failure when it comes to doing a traditional type of art. Mm. So traditional meaning people think of creativity as painting or drawing or even photography. And those are all skills that can be learned over time, right? So if you want to learn how to draw, it's not too late for you to learn how to draw. It's a skill that you can practice. But when we were when we were in kindergarten, first grade and second grade, we would draw something. It would look terrible, but people would tell us, this is amazing. You are using your gift. You are creating something magnificent. Parents mm. would put it up on the refrigerator. We would get pats on the back. We, it would be framed. So around, let's say, third or fourth grade, you start getting self-conscious about the artwork that you're creating. Maybe you're trying to draw a cat and somebody looks at your cat and is like, that's not what a cat looks like at all. This is terrible. (laughs) And so you start feeling self-conscious and not able to freely create anymore because you're afraid of being judged. So I think that's when, when the fear of creativity kind of starts. Mm -hmm. I think it carries on because I, I even see some of my students now who they'll say things like, I can't draw because my drawing doesn't look like such and such as drawing because they're comparing it to somebody who has been drawing 
for 10 years as opposed to somebody who is them who are still learning a skill. Mm-hmm. So I would think that people need to, not need to, if you want to, I invite you to release that notion that you have to be perfect when you first start off with your new skill. So mm-hmm. if you how to draw, you can learn how to draw. If you want to learn how to paint, you can. You're still taking stained glass classes until mm-hmm. you, you miss them. <laughs> wow. Burn. <This> burn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Hater. <laughs> but we're still learning. We call ourselves creative people, but that doesn't mean the first time we hopped out there and did some stained glass, we knew what we were doing. Let's talk about some of the things that we've done lately or we feel that we want to do in the future in order to tap into our creative wellness. So what are you doing, Lakay, to scratch that creative wellness itch? The thing I'm going to be doing going forward is I'm really going to throw myself into decorating my house and making it a beautiful living space. Mm. Prior to recently, it was always function over form. But this time, I'm really going to just go all out, paint everything, get rid of stuff that doesn't fit into the decor. But I'm really excited about it because I want to be able to lay things out. And this time, instead of renting, I'm able to do all kinds of crazy things that I wasn't able to do before. So that's my major project. Mm -hmm. You you got anything coming up? (laughs) Yeah, I hear that tone. (laughs) So sneaky. Well, my big announcement is by the, well, hopefully everything goes through because this is going to air a few days before the closing. (laughs) So if it all falls apart, that would be embarrassing. But I am purchasing a new home. Woo! So I'm not going to get into all the details, but I will just say this is my third house and that's not a flex people (laughs) on this podcast. I believe in like really talking about what we as women have done and accomplished and where we are. I, I think it is important for us to have those honest conversations. So I don't own those other two homes. The first town home style condo I purchased by myself, sold it. Then I bought a four bedroom house with my now ex-husband. And so this is now my third place. And what I'm really excited, why I'm really excited is the first two places were kind of like those, and I'm not, I want to be clear too, I'm not knocking cookie cutter houses because they're newer and fresher and sometimes have less pride problems but the first two were like cookie cutter houses and this is my first time owning like a 130 year old house and so yes that comes with its own challenges but the charm and characteristics that it comes with too is cool and I'm really excited about it now I might be cursing the house a year from now as things like start to like maybe fall apart or whatever but I am really excited about what I'm going to do with this house. I have already started using Milanote that LeKay is excited about. It's a vision board and using it in conjunction with Notion. I'm going to have a YouTube video out about that. So stay tuned if you're like, what the heck is Milanote? And Shay, I'm sorry. I'm going to get you addicted to another software. (laughs) And yeah, so I'm just really excited. I got my Pinterest board. My mom's on the Pinterest board and I have her sharing the Milanote. So we've already started talking about the different ideas for the house. Her and Connie are coming out here too. And um, I just, I'm just excited. So just so LaKay and I are both starting these, these new chapter in our life, right? And your home is how many, is that like almost, is it an older home or a newer home? It's right at the age where everything falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> Just real quick, I'm moving back into my childhood home. So I, I grew up here. I moved to Baltimore for 12 years. Then I moved next door to my house for <laughs> five years. And then now I'm back here. So 
the ideas that I have are things that I've been thinking about all my entire life, the things I want to change. But so I'm excited about that while I'm still trying to preserve the history of the family that grew up here. But to answer your question, the house is about 40, no, maybe 50 years old. Mm, mm. And so it's literally at the age where I'm going to have to come in and put on a new roof. It probably needs new plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> so at 130 years, somebody has already come into your house and done all of those things. So, Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure I'm going to run into some problems. So know that LaKay and I, we plan to do some videos around this. I will probably post most of my videos on my at Creative Route Instagram account because it makes more sense. That's where I post my stained glass, my wooden beads, like all my crafty home stuff there. But I'll put a few things on the Shea Snow. But I think it's important for us to capture this journey and we'll definitely talk about it because these I mean it's a new home but it's also a creative project for us from what we're going to do with the floors to painting to how we're going to create stuff for it so this is going to be a huge part of our lives in 2023 absolutely so stay tuned people because oh my god you guys are going to be sick of us Maybe I'll document mine on my Queens and Canvas account because that's more of like my artsy account as opposed to my... Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I will. I'll put a a link to her Queens of Canvas account because I feel like if there are any photos that are on your main account, it'll probably be like fancy, almost real estate like (laughs) after photos of the house. That'll be 2024, you know? And I follow so many DIYers. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. I'm going to put up wood slats and redo my furniture. So yeah. just the fact that you announced this out loud, that means I actually have to do it. That's I mean, I and the thing about it is it's going to be like a slow burn because for me, we're going to get into financial wellness and I'll talk about the financial side of this a little bit more. And both Lakay and I will share some things, but I bought this where, when the interest rates are going up. <laughs> so my mortgage payment is a lot higher than it would have been a year ago because of the market right now. And so because of that, I really have to get super crafty because I won't have as much available cash to throw into the house as I would have, right? And so I think this is going to be, it's going to take creativity to really get this house the way I want it to be. So stay tuned on that it might maybe you guys will enjoy it so much we'll have like a whole website dedicated for that y'all know how i love popping up (laughs) new websites (laughs) y'all gonna see us on hgtv (laughs) nashe and lakay nashe and lakay 50 year old house 130 year old house this is what we do as if we need something else that would be hilarious it would be it would be Oh my God. Listen, the way you manifest things, and I keep saying that because I believe, what episode number was that when you were like, oh, I'm going to have a house and da 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 da, <laughs> and here you are. Welcome. Oh my God. As a matter of fact, I probably said that I was going to have a house. You did. Okay. I mean, it didn't come the way I thought it was going to come, but here it but is. But it's here. It <laughs> Welcome is here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, so we'll get into all of that. I won't even get into that here, but it's so much goodness that I'm I'm excited. So stay tuned. If all goes well, I should have a house three days after this comes out. <laughs> so check on my well-being. That's a really big thing, but I'm going to continue to do like small things for creativity. I wanted to mention that on episode 150, nashesnow.com slash 150, I had Sarah Matthews on. And Sarah Matthews had an episode called Solo Exhibitions, Teaching Courses, and How to Encourage Yourself. And what she said is she was going to go to different museums and then create art inspired by things that she saw at the museums. So we, Sarah and I, 
went to the museum, the African American Museum in DC. She allowed me to tag along with her and I'm so excited. And so as far as creativity to me, that is like a creative activity without me even doing something where I'm making something, but me just going to the museum, walking around with Sarah the other week, to me was a, my create creative activity for that day. So I plan on making sure like that I do big and small creative activities in order to increase my creative wellness. That's a perfect way to, to include new ideas into your own things that you're creating is by mm. referencing things that are in museums. Mm. As we compare ourselves to artists who are on Instagram or on social media who are far along in their art practice and we're like, oh man, I wish I could get there. But if you're constantly just being inspired by people who are contemporary to you, then you're only going to put out stuff that you already see. As opposed to what you and Sarah did is you went to a museum and these are people who have taken the inspirations who are masters at their game so you're getting your inspiration from there and it's going to stay in your head and you never know what you're going to create from that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's perfect yeah anything else you wanted to mention about because that's huge right just the house itself any stained glass or anything in your future wow really (laughs) (laughs) i know my new garage is going to have a stained glass area (laughs) well i'm gonna have an art studio and i'm gonna have a stained glass something just so i can have it so i can say niche look what i've done today no in all seriousness niche i'm gonna be leaning on you a lot because you have a really good design eye i know what i like but i have too many ideas and you'll be able to be like yes a b c and d forget e and f and i'm like great now you go for it so i'm excited about that but i go to I didn't even consider that was really good that you say that I go to art openings and galleries and stuff all the time, just because that's my form of entertainment. I'm mm-hmm. too old to hit the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> so my entertainment is going to gallery openings and, and being around other artists. I'm going to an opening tonight. Two See? of them. Mm. So that's great. Yeah. But I so have I just... a bunch more to say on this subject. So I, I'm going to have to do a blog post or something. Well, do you, well, let's talk about making time for creativity, kind of provide like last thoughts. And if you would like to do a guest post on the Shaysong.com for creativity, you know, I welcome it. (laughs) But if you're going to do it, people are going to hear it and they're going to be like, where is this post? So I'm just saying. Goodness. Stay tuned. (laughs) Oh, see, you see how she backed out of that real quick. Y'all going to come help me unpack this house? (laughs) So, okay. So let's talk about, as we wrap up here, I don't know how I'm going to keep this episode under an hour, but I'm going to try through creative editing. What they want. It's going to be an hour and a half. That's what they want, Nashe. Listen. Okay, go ahead. Is making time for creativity. Mm -hmm. So here are some tips that I recommend. And then, okay, I would love to hear what works for you because everybody is a little different. So what I'll say is as far as like when it comes to doing kind of macro creative things like we talked about going to events, I think that is just committing to doing something maybe once a week where you go out and do something like an art gallery or some other type of event. Like even tonight, I'm going to Monique Malcolm's book signing and there will also be other authors there. I consider that creative. I'm going to support artists, right? Like writers. And so that to me is something that is scheduled. It's on my calendar and I'm committing to. So one thing I would just say is put things on the calendar and stick with it. Don't make an excuse on not to go. Actually do it. The second thing when it comes to creativity, so the stained glass class, for example, I I told you guys I missed two classes, which it's a nine week course. It's not the end of the world, but I do hate that I missed those two classes. It's just poor timing. But for the most part, when I am signed up for a class, because I've paid money for it, I do attend. And so that's just another way to hold yourself accountable, sign up for something, and actually do it when you can. 
And so, and then that goes back to putting it out on the calendar and being consistent. And then the third thing that I'll say is creating a plan. So I mentioned Milano, I mentioned Notion. For this new house, this is going to make Lakea a little sick because I'm sure she hasn't done any of this. But <laughs> I have a Notion table with all of my to-do lists from painting to getting the floors done to getting the fireplace taken care of to all the things that I want to accomplish in the house. I've set like the priorities for it. And then I also have Milano and I have different sections like living room, dining room and so forth with inspirational photos to help me make decisions about the things that I have in Notion. And like I said, a video is coming soon about this, but I have dates associated with specific things. And so each week I have things that I know I want to focus on holding me accountable. And I'm going to be doing some just practical things, but some really creative things within the house. And I'm doing it in an organized fashion with giving me a little leniency, like maybe the first week of November or within December do X, Y, Z, but it's doing that. So I'll shut up. Yes. Yeah. No, I I would like to point out to the listeners that Nache is the productivity queen, right? She has this list of everything organized and you don't even have keys yet. You're not even in <laughs> yet. And you are 100% more organized than I am. And this is why I need to continue to listen to your podcast and read your little hater <laughs> newsletter dedicated to me because you are doing a fantastic job <laughs> of stuff organized. I just need I needed to say that. <laughs> And what I will say is, folks, I'm not perfect, but I, because I'm naturally not an organized person, I force myself to be organized because I like results. I'm not really. My mom is super organized. I'm not. I just have learned to be an organized person, I promise. And really, it's just kind of committing to taking the time to do the things, right? So instead of watching TV or scrolling social media some nights, I'm scrolling Pinterest. I'm taking the time to take an hour to research different painting companies, to research different flooring companies, sending out emails. Like I tell myself, I am going to take this time in order to make this happen. And when you prioritize the things that you care about, things get done. I I read a quote somewhere that said, use your weekends to create the life that you want to have instead of the using your weekends to create a life you want to escape or Mm. escape the life that you have. Something like that. Mm. (laughs) Yes, I will look for that. I love that. So that's what it sounds like you're doing. So people, some people try to escape, take vacations, go out every weekend, but instead we're going to be spending our weekends getting these houses together because we're creating a life that we want to have. And that includes having a beautiful space that we can come in and share with our friends who are going to come over and when we come to DC to visit. Yes. Because this is the thing, what I realized about myself and I'll get into it in the financial episode is I do love to travel. You guys know, especially before COVID, I probably would travel like three times a year or so. And, but I love being at home. I love being at home. And so to me, my priority is creating a space that when I come home, I feel joy and it's where I want to be. Even though I love going out, I love traveling. We spend most of our time either if you have a nine to five at work or at home. And so you want to make sure like where you're spending your time reflects you. And yeah, so I'm always trying to think about how I can build a life that I want, be it making more money in order to invest in things that are a priority to me, or just figuring out how to make my surroundings more pleasurable, you know? And so, yeah. Environmental wellness episode. Ooh, yes. And there will definitely be lots of talks on plants. On that episode. <laughs> like that pretty plant wall that I sent you. <laughs> yes. So for you, Lakay, any tips or things that you're going to try to do in order to make sure you get your new house or the way you want to, or that you just continue to 
take time to be creative? Well, my only tip for <laughs> getting my house together is being in competition with you because I can't let your house be done before mine. So that's not helpful to anybody else. So I'm going to send you all, <laughs> I'm going to list out some things that'll help you all add creativity to your own lives. So mm. here's one thing that I think you can do is I think everyone can find like a challenge to join. So there's always like online, some kind of creative challenge. For instance, when this episode airs, we're still in October. I have my students doing an Inktober challenge. Mm-hmm. And that's just creating a little sketch every single day in some random prompt. And that just builds a practice so that they can improve on their design skills, but it also forces you out of your comfort zone. When I was teaching photography, I had them do a photo a day challenge. And so instead of leaving your camera at home, you would take it with you and just try to find the one thing that exemplifies the day. So it makes you look around and look at things in a new way. So find some kind of challenge. The next thing she already talked about a little bit is I always encourage people to find inspiration from traditional artists as opposed Mm. to contemporaries. So like you said already, but it was on my list too. Go to museums, get historical art books. That's where you want to take your inspiration from. So let's say that you're going to make a holiday wreath instead of going, I mean, I love Pinterest. I got 20,000 pins to prove it, but instead of going to Pinterest to find your inspiration for a holiday wreath, you could go to, to a museum and see how they created a floral something in one of the paintings. Maybe you can be inspired by the colors or the style or the type of flowers or whatever you want to do. So if you take it from there, as opposed to what everybody else is doing, that's already being a little bit different and adding your flair because your eye is going to pick up on something different from somebody else. So that's really important to me and to what I tell my students to do. Mm, mm. There's along those same lines, there's a book called steel like an artist. Have we talked oh about yeah. I, I don't know if we've talked about it, but I know which book you're talking about. Okay. It's by Austin Cleon. Mm. So you can put that in the show notes too, but it's a really good book to read. It's not that we are stealing from the masters. I know master is not a great word to say in 2022, but (laughs) that's just what it's called, the masters of art. You're not, even if you take directly from what they're doing, you're still going to have your own spin as opposed to stealing from your contemporaries, which is the same idea, but everything's going to look the same. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and lastly, to help, just stay creative. Keep some kind of sketchbook, notebook, mm. Mm. or pencil handy at all times. That's just mm. for your creative thoughts. Nishay was talking earlier about just having that one journal that was only for her business things. What you was it was for business or your just for yeah. your podcast notes and ideas? Just for business. Yeah, it's like a planner. Mm-hmm. So keep a little sketchbook that if growing your creative practice is important to you, just keep a sketchbook of just creative things, not your meals, not your notes for other things. Just, oh, today I saw the clouds doing something weird and it reminded me that I need to draw a picture of my dog, whatever. And sketches and little things that you don't have to share with anybody else, even if your sketch is just very rudimentary or pencil sketches or stick figures. It's just for you to create a practice of creativity and getting the ideas off of your head into a book. Mm-hmm. I love that. Those are great ideas. Thanks. I have some sometimes. I just want to make sure that you're going to execute your own ideas. Like I said, every time you post something about your house, I'm like, oh, snap, I got to paint this weekend. I'm going to post something. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly competition. <laughs> And it's not even two ways. It's just me trying to keep up with this shit. No, I call it, it won't be competition. It's inspiration. I'm there we, thank you. Level of productivity. And I know she's going to get it done because she's already had it all mapped out. <laughs> and she's already got me on Milanote, which I'm excited about. So I'm going to lo- use Notion and Milanote, probably more Milanote. <laughs> the thing about any type of productivity tool be it analog or digital is that it works 
mm-hmm. for the person. And so even though I love notions, some of that, that may resonate with some people, but like for you, notion hurts your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm going to make her a believer, people. I think I just need to sit down with her. I need to create a special video. Because it's got so much goodness and amazing. But it's not for everyone, right? Like, everybody has, like, different apps and planners and journals and all the things. But you just experiment it with a bunch of stuff and then just figure out what works. And you know it's working when you actually start seeing results. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, Melanote was almost going to be on my, my get rid of it list too. But then I figured out how to use it. See? Yeah. And, and that's the thing about any of the software too. Like Notion, I think would be great for all the things you do from your photography stuff to like the house stuff to all the things. But when you're really busy, sometimes it, it's just hard to take the time to learn new software. Mm-hmm. And that's half the battle. Once you know it, you know it. But that beginning phase of learning new software is always really hard. Um, And that's why I'm trying to create videos and I'll create more videos where I go over the basics of certain things in order to help people and get them there faster. Because even when I think about my phone, I need to create some videos on like how I use the focus mode, how I use widgets, how I've set up my phone in order to help me stay focused and organized and inspired, right? And every I, I was just in New York with one of my besties, Don, and I was showing her some things on the phone and she was like, we had that feature? <laughs> and I'm like, girl. <laughs> but it's because we're so busy, right? And all these new iOS, you know, 16 and new things come out and only nerds like me read three, four articles on all the new <laughs> features. That have come out, and I'm like, look, we can now take someone out of a photo and turn them into a sticker, (laughs) right? And so it takes time. So don't beat yourself up, folks, if you feel like you're behind or you're just not getting it. It's just that we're all busy, and it just is what it is. But figure out what works for you and what you actually have time to incorporate into your system. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up because this is has been a great episode, but we are super long, so that means it's going to take some editing. <laughs> you got to give the people what they want, Lachey. They've been waiting for this creativity episode. You know, I, a long time ago, was like, oh, I'm going to do the, these 20, 30-minute episodes. And it's gonna... I remember you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very proud. The episodes that I did the other week, Five Tips to Boost Productivity, with 16 minutes. Nobody wants that. Boom! You want an hour and 16 Boom! Minutes. I was so proud of myself. I stayed. I had my little notes. I stayed on task. I was super quick. But when you look back, everything else is like hour, 55 minutes. I mean, <laughs> but there's just so many, so much stuff we love to share with you guys. I mean, I really do hope that if you're listening to the end, And hey, Sarah, if you are, hey, Sarah, (laughs) that you find this to be useful, right? Because this is like, you guys are getting a window into like Kay and I's just conversation when we're just like talking and brainstorming. This is like a friend's conversation. So I feel like we're letting you in because you're like now our friend too. And even though we can't hear you, we're all having this conversation with each other. (laughs) That was cheesy, but I do. No, I love it. it. I love it. (laughs) Okay. So, anywho, hope that this helped you out. In the future, maybe in a few weeks, I will link in the show notes LaKay's article that she is going to write on creative wellness. Let's give her a mm, Thanksgiving timeline. So, by the 25th. I will post the article with all the K's finds <laughs> and her, all the things. But to wrap up here, 
If you found this episode to be useful, please go over to Apple Podcasts, rate me five stars. I greatly appreciate it. If you're looking at us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. And wherever you're listening, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Of course, on the shop arm for nichesnow.com, which is dreamsplansideas.com. I have so many productivity things from digital undated planners to the Notion travel planner, which people really love. And so go over there, check it out. I'm sure I have something that will help you get you to where you need to be to the Life Cleanse Journal that I talked about earlier. So check it out, gift it to a friend. And yeah, that's it. The K, thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming great. on <laughs> again. And we'll we'll be in your your ears in two weeks. <laughs> I don't have to have my article written in two weeks, do I? Mm, not two weeks, but mm, in four. <laughs> All right, guys. Have an amazing week. Bye. Bye.